Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC, and we're here at SC13 in Denver, Colorado, and we're here at the Cool IT Systems booth. And here with Jeff. Jeff, how are you doing today? Doing really well. Yeah, Great yeah. to be here. Did you have a good show? We're almost done here. That's fantastic. I mean, we're all a little tired, but it's been a fantastic show. Okay, well, we should start at the beginning. I mean, who is Cool IT Systems and who do you help? Uh, cool IT Systems is a specialist in liquid cooling for servers. Um, what we've been doing over the years is creating liquid cooling first in the gaming uh, area and then we've had fantastic adoption taking place there. We've always had a vision of being the liquid cooling provider for servers in a high performance compute uh, arena and it's now becoming a reality for us. Well that's terrific. It seems like things got, got some momentum here but why don't you show us what you got in the booth? Sure thing. This year what's new for us is we've moved to a centralized pumping scheme. So we have created a, a very low profile uh, cold plate. That's the um, the copper plate that has very small micro channels built into the system. It transfers the heat from the processor directly into the liquid. So it gives us an ability, since there's no pump in here anymore, to go to a very narrow uh, construction. It's only 15 millimeters tall. It makes it simple for us to integrate this into compact form factors like blade servers or some of these twin configurations. Uh, a real challenge to get liquid in and out even. So we've got uh, something that makes that job a lot easier yeah, for yeah. us. So you used to have the pump there and you had that, that took a lot more uh, of bulk to do that before, right? Yeah, almost double the height uh, of what we have here. So. Um, uh, again, the, some of the advantages that liquid cooling has to provide is the fact that we can increase the density. And what's common with increasing the density is having these blades be smaller and more narrow and more compact as we go along. And I see you got a number of examples of different vendors that are using your technology. Yeah, this is a, a reference Intel design, Grizzly Pass. Uh, uh, in the first example, using the new low-profile cold plates. Um, we have this one is a uh, custom 1U in configuration by one of our customers, Sierra. Um, and we have uh, a Cisco server, which is uh, a very nice configuration that actually includes not only cooling for the CPUs, but also the memory as well. So if I lift the, uh, the cover up, you can actually see that what we're doing is using uh, little heat pipe links to cool uh, utilizing the liquid channel or the cold rail um, that goes down along beside the ram. Okay, so you don't have to force air to cool the, uh, the memory. Uh, you can do liquid cooling throughout the system. Yeah, I mean, it's something that was done as a, as a special project, an option. Uh, we're finding, um, uh, for the most part, though, our customers are most interested in gathering the heat uh, from the hottest points in the system. Um, so. Uh, we also have uh, a nice example here of uh, another customer, One Stop Systems. They are doing uh, liquid-cooled Xeon Phi. Um, so, in fact, actually, probably the crowning achievement for our company is uh, a cooperation that we did together with Intel. So what are we looking at here? This is actually a, a special system that was put together, um, in fact, uh, in a very short order. Uh, Intel came to us saying that they had an ambition to put a top 500 system on the show floor at SC13, not that long ago. And uh, they determined quickly that in order to achieve that, they were going to require a liquid cooling uh, solution in order to do it. So what we've done here is created a, um, uh, a liquid cooling solution for there's a, an Intel Phi uh, card here, which is 300 watts, another one here, and a third one actually underneath. So we have 900 watts on the Intel Phi, and then we additionally have 250 watt Xeon processors. So we've got a total of 1,200 watts just in processor power in this tiny little package. <laughs> we're, we're getting close to arc welding uh, amperage here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's amazing, but there's a direct correlation for performance and power going to the, uh, to the processors. But by using liquid cooling, what we're doing is we're actually dissipating all that power through two compact, simple liquid lines. So the, uh, the, the heat is gathered uh, in the liquid, and then the, the hot liquid comes out of the server and right into our manifolds. Oh yeah. So as the hot liquid comes out, it goes into our manifold, which carries that up into our heat dissipation modules, 
So you'll notice I'll use the word module quite a bit because we've got natural breakpoints here. So we do the server modules, which is what we looked at before, going into the manifold module, bringing that heat up, and then in this example we have our CHX, which is we call a, a coolant heat exchanger. Um, the coolant heat exchanger then dissipates all the heat into a facility water flow and outside to a dry cooler or a cooling tower or in some cases a chilled water supply. Okay, well, let's take a look at that. So we've got a coolant heat exchanger. So that, that hot liquid that comes in from the manifold uh, goes through the reservoir here where we can capture any air uh, that may be in the flow cycle. Um, then we have our dual redundant circulating pumps. So this is driving the flow for the entire rack. Uh, and that hot liquid goes through the uh, braze plate heat exchanger. This has a very high capacity, capable of dissipating tremendous amounts of heat, even more than what we're seeing here on the floor. Um, and then that cool liquid is then exiting back towards the uh, cold side manifold. The facility water is actually what's providing the cooling. That actually enters in here. We have a proportional valve so that in the event that we have chilled water supply, um, we, there's actually a risk. If we allow that to flow freely, it could overcool the coolant. And you'd have condensation then, wouldn't you? Exactly. Yeah. So what we don't want to do is create condensation inside the servers. So this is a, a control system that actually allows us to vary the amount of cold water flow to guarantee that we're not going to have condensation inside the servers. Yeah. There's a full control system that's actually operating that along with leak detection, um, fill level uh, reporting. The, the overall health of the system is, co is uh, tracked constantly. So on the front of all of our systems is a touchscreen solution that allows you, while you're right in front of it, to see all of the various different temperatures of the system, the alert levels. So if there is any sort of alarms that are going off, it would show here. You can configure it to send out messages to let the uh, individuals that are responsible know if we have an issue. Um, and then we've got operating data here as well so that it tells the pressure, uh, the flow of the coolant, uh, the dew point because we got to track that to make sure we're always uh, regulated higher than that uh, and the humidity since we have it available. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, well that's all well and fine Jeff, but what if I don't have plumbing in my facility? Are we out of luck here? Well, no, we actually have developed a solution for that specifically. It's right over here. Okay. So what are we looking at here? This is a, another heat exchanger, but a very different type of system, isn't it? That's right. A lot of data centers are anxious to put in the density that liquid cooling can provide, the performance that they want, but unfortunately they don't have liquid plumb to the rack level yet. So we've got an option for them that allows them to get started immediately. This is a self-contained rack solution that allows them, you know, at the manifold module to plug into an, a liquid to air heat exchanger. So. This unit up on top here, the, the big hat that's on top of the rack, pulls air in from the cold aisle, dissipates the heat into the air from the liquid, and then exhausts it into the hot aisle. Now, this isn't adding a great deal of efficiency to this equation. I mean, it is a little more efficient than the fans that are inside the servers. However, what it does do is allow them to get started quickly. Later on, if they actually get the liquid plumb to the rack, then they can take the AHX off, add in the CHX and then have all the efficiency that they've invested in with their liquid cooling oh, system. Yeah, yeah, because the, the, the blades and everything wouldn't be affected by that. They're just doing the same kind of operation, aren't they? That's exactly. The, right. All right, very cool. Um, well, I did want to ask you about um, the monitoring. Does that go to a network or, uh, you know, is there a way to consolidate that or how does that work? You bet. It actually is fully networked uh, and actually we have a, a user interface that's built and I can show you that over here. All right, so as far as monitoring, what do we have here? So we've got the Rack DCLC Command Center. So if we have multiple racks that are deployed, all the same information that was being reported on the touch screens is available here remotely. So we've got all the same sort of alert configurations. I actually don't think that we would see this deployed as it exists here because there's a dashboard typically being put together by most data centers. So we have an open SDK that other individuals can integrate our information into their own view as they see fit. We can also be compatible with SNMP traps, um, IPMI, BMC, 
it really just depends on the type of system they want to use for monitoring. Okay. Okay. Well, before we let you go, I wanted to ask you about momentum because this this has definitely progressed since last we talked. But what about deals? What about shipments? What can you tell me? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it doesn't take a lot of imagination as you walk around the floor here that you see liquid cooling everywhere. You know, it's almost as though the industry all at once has finally said, okay. Liquid is okay. I mean, our sales volume has gone through the roof. Um, we're super happy with the growth, getting great interest from a number of partners here. But more practically speaking, you know, we're now shipping decent volume into the data center. You know, this quarter alone, we'll be installing, uh, I think, 524 racks. Um, so it's a sizable, a yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a big deal. And, you know, we're, we're super pleased that we've been putting in the effort for the number of years that we have to be ready for this, this type of adoption.